Peace, peace. Welcome to the Speak Your Mind podcast with the <laughs> Ali's. We in the building once again. It's a beautiful day, but we here to give you some information that is relevant to your ears. Today is April 18th, which is Knowledge, Build or Destroy, All or be, be, All Being Born. Knowledge is accumulation of facts and information. To build is to add on, construct, or elevate, and to destroy is to take away or to decimate or to decrease. So we must add on to the positive things in our environment just to bring light to the negative things in our environment and get rid of the negative things within our cipher so that we can constantly build to be born, which is that which is to be complete. So with that, I say peace. And I want to say, you know, salute to all the people out here that's trying to make a difference in the community. And next, I pass it on to my beautiful queen, the beautiful queen, Shanice Gatewood Ali. Peace. Peace, King. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Good. So um, today is a great day. We we have some good stuff to share with everybody. Um, I hope everybody's tuning in. Get this knowledge. Every Sunday we have something different. Speak Your Mind podcast. You can always call in and just speak your mind. Um, there's no judgment here. Uh, we definitely want your input for today's um Podcast. I hear a lot of feedback. You hear a lot of feedback. Yes. I'm so super excited because this is something that what we talk about today is something that we all need to open up our minds to actually understand that it's not our nature to do certain things um, as they painted out to be in the world and the media that it's naturally um, black people do the things that they do and it's not true. So, you know, we're going to talk about nature versus nurture and we're going to get on with the topic. Yeah, I don't know what the feedback is. Can you hear me good? I can hear you good, but I hear a lot of feedback on my end. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the feedback is. I'm not seeing any feedback over here. It's okay. Is it better? Let me see. Yes, it's much better. Much better? Okay, beautiful. So, yes, we back in the building on another Sunday to give you the Speak Your Mind podcast with the Ali's. So, you know, as always, we start with the current events. And this week's current events, we have a couple things to speak about. Um, so, first, let's, without no further ado, let's get to the first topic. The first topic is a very unfortunate situation because we just last week, Said rest in peace to our brother, DMX. But now this week, we have another unfortunate demise of one of the more talented people in the rap industry. So this one right here, rapper Black Rob has died at 51. Celebrities react. And this is an article within the Grio. So we want to say rest in peace to Black Rob, first and foremost. Um, you know, uh, Black Rob is from the Harlem community. My wife is from the Harlem community, and we live in the Harlem community currently. So we definitely want to, you know, send that, send those warm vibrations out there to everybody who knew Black Rob and who was affected by Black Rob. You know, Woe was a big song. Yes. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I remember that song as a kid. Like, everything was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that song was it was hot. It was popular. It was dope. It it definitely fit into any sentence, <laughs> you know, <No>. whoa. <laughs> so, you know, um, shout out to his family and everyone else that um, know him very well. Black Rob was um, a Harlem near. And um, I just want to say to all my friends and, and, People that's that's close to us, that's into the hip hop world, you know, we don't hear about our celebrities um, until later, until they pretty much gone. But we don't even hear the struggles that they go through. So I just want my people to understand that even if you uh, get into the hip hop world and you actually get out the, the out of the city. You doing better and bigger things. Always invest your money into yourself. Invest your money into yourself, medically healthy. You know, make sure you're good. 
don't never be so busy that you're not getting your uh, checkups or your physicals, you know, because what I see, a lot of people that's in the industry, they smoke and they drink a lot. And what happens? Nine times out of 10, when you're out there drinking a lot, your liver will shrink, shrink up. What is it called? Liver. Um, Cirrhosis of the liver. Right. So at the end of the day, just pay attention to your body. You know, sometimes you want to get ahead and, and, and get out the hood or whatever you want to do, whatever your goal is. But never forget about your health. So as I said, this this is an article from thegrio.com. And it says the Grio recently recently reported that fans were alarmed by the New York native's appearance after he was seen on a on on a video in a hospital bed. The video, which was recorded by Power 105's DJ Self, was made so that Black Rob could give his condolences to rapper DMX, who died on April 9th. I feel everything about X Man. X was positive. Love the X, he said briefly in the Instagram video. I know many of y'all seen the Instagram video. It was graphic and it showed Black Rob, you know, looking like he was very sick. So in another video shared by DJ Self, Black Black Rob born Robert Ross opened up about his health battles and homelessness. I have been dealing with this for five years. Damn, four strokes. I don't know what to tell you. This SHIT is crazy. This SHIT is hard. I don't have no house to live in, he said in the video. I need some rest, man. So in a 2015 interview with Sway Calloway on Sway in the Morning, Rob revealed that he dealt with high blood pressure and suffered a stroke. Mark Kirby, former Bad Boy rec recording artist, tearfully confirmed the news and asked for the rap rapper's children to reach out to him. Rob passed away about, away about an hour ago, he said. On Monday, matter of fact, let's play this video real quick. Unfortunately, in one place, so we're going to keep going. On Monday, Curry called out rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs, who founded Bad Boy Records, to reach out and help. Puffy, we need your help, and you and you are reaching out, he said in the video. A GoFundMe campaign was launched by Mike Zombie in the effort to help find him a home, pay for medical help and stability during these trying times. We've lost a lot of legends, and we can't afford to lose any more. This is, this is my way to try and help. The campaign raised more than... 27,000 out of the $50,000 goal. Wow. Wow. This is messed up, man. Rest in peace to Black Rob. Yo, man, unfortunately, you know, Noriega been saying for the last few years since I've been watching Drink Chance, he's been saying that they need to come up with some type of coalition or something to take care of, it, of our our hip-hop pioneers and, and those who were once famous who no longer have the prominence that they want had once had and that they should come together. So, you know, I think that this is very important. We shouldn't see anybody that was in the public eye and any, and especially in our community, in this hip hop community, you know, hip hop is very endear to me. I think that we should definitely all look out for each other and it shouldn't turn out like this. Right. That's so that's so our first story. Unfortunately, rest in peace, Black Rob, once again. So next up, next up, this this is very important in the news right now. This current um, situation with this big trial, they're saying that this is the trial of the century right now. And it's going to say a lot of things about how we carry forward in this century especially with police police um brutality so this article is also in the griot it says derek chauvin murder trial could be the verdict of a generation opinion former minneapolis officer chauvin's conviction could become a mandate against the senseless disregard disregard for black lives that we have all longed for the criminal trial of derek chauvin could lead to the verdict of a generation there was no justice in the murder of Amadou Diallo. There was no justice in the murder of Sean Bell. There was no justice in the murder of Oscar Grant. There was no justice in the murder of Tamir Rice. But Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer whose horrifying conduct outraged the nation, 
could spend decades, if not the rest of his life in prison for murdering George Floyd. Chauvin is currently facing charges of second degree unintentional felony murder, third degree depraved mind murder, and second degree manslaughter in his fatal arrest of George Floyd almost a year ago. Wow, it's been almost a year. In June 2020, Hennepin County District Attorney Mike Freeman filed a criminal complaint against Chauvin initiating prosecution against the former officer for killing Floyd. Days later, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz decided to hand prosecution of the case over to the state's first black congressman and current uh, Attorney General Keith Ellison after Floyd's family that had lobbied for the uh, Attorney General's involvement. As cities work work to grapple with calls to defund law enforcement, the final criminal charges against Chauvin were announced. In the months following, the trial jury was selected and the attorney general appointed prosecuting counsel to argue the state's case. And then in an unusual yet encouraging turn of events, the city of Minneapolis reached an unprecedented $27 million civil settlement with George Floyd's family over the wrongful death. The settlement was the highest payout related to a wrongful death lawsuit in the city's history and couldn't have been announced at a more remarkable time. With just three months until the start of the trial, many wondered if the landmark decision would strengthen the chances of Chauvin's conviction and ultimately whether Mr. Floyd's family would receive justice in the criminal trial. Wow. So I know I, I, I haven't been watching the full trial, but I've tuned in this week and I've seen that they were on the, the defense had basically rested. So that means that it's going it's going to go to closing arguments. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go to closing arguments, and I think on Monday, and then it'll go to the, um, it'll go to the jury so that they can decide the fate of the case. So you know, I, I don't know. This, this, this case has been giving me a lot of anxiety lately. I don't really, I haven't really, really watched the trial because they keep showing this video, and this video is like, it's, 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 it's bringing something up in me. I really don't like watching that video again and again and again. So you know, I'm just trying to see what the verdict is of this trial. What you think? <sighs> I don't even know what to say. I just hope everything go right for the people. Um, and the the way they board and stuff up, the people pay attention. They board and stuff up for a reason. So I just really, really hope they find justice for this case. One thing I do want to say also, I believe, me personally, by watching so many different um, instances where police brutality is the payoff, right? So if you get paid off, but you still want justice, don't take the payoff. Mm. Mm. Don't so take the payoff. You, you don't think they should have took that twenty-seven million? I don't know. I don't believe so. And I understand that we, you know, of course, that's um, pretty much hoping you come out of poverty, right? And you get into another bracket but you can't say you take that but you still want this mm. Mm. so if I, give you, if I give you 27 million dollars that's me telling you that's it nothing else you want to get it. now if you say no I don't want this money but I want justice for my situation, for my sibling who you killed or whatever the case might be, then don't take the money. You can't have a both. But they be so quick to give us money. Even back in our ancestors, our slavery days, you know, we come up with this great idea. We have a great business. I think you and I was watching Famous Amos. Famous Amos, yeah. Famous Amos was on uh, on uh, Shark Tank. Yeah, that's right. 
And this man came up with these chocolate chip delicious cookies. But somebody came and bought him out. Now he back on Shark Tank to recreate another type of cookie. So my thing is, once you get the payment, that's it. Right. That's it. So, I mean, I understand people need the money for whatever situation that you're in. But at the end of the day, you can't want both and expect to get both. It's not going to happen. That's just my personal opinion. I agree. So the next topic, it kind of speaks to what you're speaking about, but in a different way, because, you know, they saying that you have all of these black women that are being, um, that are being discriminated against when they're trying to work in these organizations. So, I mean, if I'm listening to what you're saying, I think that they should maybe start their own organization. But according to this article, it says black women are 58 percent less likely to be higher than government than white women. I'm um, than white men. So it says that new data reveals that. Oh, and this article is in the Amsterdam News, and it says new data reveals that qualified black women are 58 percent less likely to be hired for a government job than their white male counterparts, according to new research from GovernmentJobs.com, the leading public sector job board. Uh, based on analysis of over 17 million applications. Over a twenty over a two year time period, the data identifies disparities throughout the hiring process by race, ethnicity, and gender. The goal of the report is to increase awareness of the inequities and spur change. While diverse candidates as well are well represented in government, in the 2021 Diversity and Public Sector Hiring Report reveals that Black candidates must apply at a significantly higher rate than any other racial group to maintain their representation. Despite constituting 28% of applications, only 18% of the public sector hires are black. The most significant drop off is prior to the interview stage. Black women who are qualified for positions were 39% less likely to be offered an interview than their white male counterparts. So, you know, we see all of this disparity in, in the different job sectors. You know, the government job is like the number one job that people are looking for. So. You know, we, 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 we stop looking for the jobs and we start our own organizations. We start our own businesses. And then, as you said, they get bought out and then we're back in the job sector again. So it's like we getting we getting this inequity, this inequality, this disparities all around the board. Mm -hmm. So what you think about that? You know, who was that? James Bond, Baldwin. Right? Baldwin, yeah. He said. And this is a quote from him from back in the day that we just recently heard. And it makes a lot of sense. When you're conscious, you're always mad. Mm. Because you see the bull crap that's going on in the world every day. You see it. And then, you know, you try to teach others, but they don't want to get taught because they are conditioned to a, a not to face the truth. And it's sad. We need to get into those rooms and sit at those tables and say, we see the bull that's going on. Somebody just told me that at her job right now that she's working at can't say where and i can't say who the person is but this individual told me yesterday that it was a black woman who had a came to uh get interview at her job and the black woman had a case that was 15 years ago right and they turned around and hired a white male that had a case that is way worse than hers. And they hired him. And now this individual that was talking to me yesterday said that she knows for a fact 
because the dude worked with her every day. And of course they share, you know, I guess probably stories or whatever the case might be. So once again, we are back to being uh, treated as we are less than. This is why, yes, you can start your own. But one thing I do not like about starting your own, you don't have enough support from your own. And then when you go to another race of people, that's the opposite of who you want to work with, those are the ones who support you. Right. <laughs> I agree. So here we got, we got two different aspects. We just spoke about, um, you know, starting your own business and going out there to apply for a job. We both, we receiving discrimination in both, or we being beaten out of the organization that we started. And then the next thing you know, it's a whole different people running the organization and we back to square one. So it's just, it's just real, it's just real, you know, it's real disconcerting. Um, and we're gonna move on to the next topic. How you doing today though? I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm good. embracing good. the curly look. I like it. <laughs> you looking nice. Looking I'm like embracing. a job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embracing this look, but not for too long. <laughs> so I'm good though. So there's mm -hmm. some people that are winning in the business, though, right now. This right here is a very, very, very important um, financial breakthrough. This brother right here is doing his thing in various businesses. So our yes. brother, Rap yeah. Icon, Nasir Jones, says Rap Icon, Nas could net $100 million when Coinbase, Coinbase List on NASDAQ, right? This article is in Yahoo Finance. Mm -hmm. It says US rapper Nasir Jones, better known by his stage name Nas, is among the fortunate few that have made early investments in Coinbase, the cryptocurrency exchange expected to reach over 100 billion in valuation when its coin stock lists on Wednesday. Now, this is this is a couple days ago, this article, so it already listed. So Jones, uh, Jones investment firm Queensbridge Venture Partners got into Coinbase's Series B round back in 2013 when it raised $25 million. Around that time, Coinbase was valued at $143 million, according to PitchBook. Nas News shows how far Coinbase's public listing will ripple across the world of venture capital with everyone from Wall Street veterans to A-list celebrities all standing to win big when the chips fall this week. Queensbridge, which was also a backer of Robinhood in 2013 and later Lyft and Dropbox, makes early stage investments of between 100000 and 500000 according to Jones Queensbridge co-founder Anthony Salat. Dividing the firm's 100000 to 50000 stake by the share price at the time of Coinbase's Series B points to Queensbridge owning around 99,329 shares on the low end of the 496,642 on the high, end, high end, according to anal analysis by Coindesk. At the price that Coinbase shares last traded on private secondary markets, 350 per share, Jones firm would have a pot of somewhere between 34.76 million and 173 Point eight million. If Coinbase shares trade at investment bank DA Davis's new price of target 440, Queensbridge could see the value of Coinbase stake rise to 43.7 million and 218.5 million, respectively. Wow. 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 That's like, well, so listen, with that, once again, you got to have money to get in. Yeah, you gotta have money to get you in. You gotta have money to get in. You know, like right now they have all the real estate, you know, great. And you know, I've been looking at so many different ways to enhance 
our situation, you and I both, you you finished, you, you took a, a great test and I hope you get into that and you passed it. I have watched you sit home and you study, study, study. And that's only to get us from one part of where we at right now into a better part. You know, we're good, but we want to get better. We want to know more. This is why we preach to people, go back to school. Why? Because things is not just handed to us all the time. <clears throat> and if it is handed to you, you got to you gotta sit back and analyze who's the people that's handing it to you. <laughs> you <know? clears throat> so with that being said, like, go back to school and open up your mind to bigger and better things. You know, I'm getting my master's. I want to learn how to run a business. I want to be able to learn how to put a proposal together. I want to be able to run my own. I want to be able to do all these things and get into the the room and at the table with other people that's like-minded as myself, as well as you. You're doing great work. Salute to you, my king, for doing the great things that you're doing, and I want you to get into that as well, because people need to recognize and realize we're not just not being out in the community, we're enhancing certain things so we could keep it going. You know, we don't want to sell our business. We want to keep our business. And then we could go into real estate and all these other things and buy, buy property or whatever it is that we want to do, we'll be able to do that because now our income bracket is a little different. Right. But... Right. They don't tell you everything. They don't tell you everything. So we got to go into the books. This man always buying books. We got to go into the books <laughs> and get the information. Or I have watched you get on YouTube. I have watched you go to lectures. I have watched you get on other people's Zooms and get the information. And that is what a real research uh, a person who wants to enhance their life or their mind or better their situations do. And that's what Nas has done. That's what Kanye West has done. They are rappers. They got money. They, they enhance themselves. They sat at the table with other billionaires. They doing great work. But what they failing is failing their own family as in a uh, uh, hip hop family. Like we just said, with Black Rock, maybe they should put some money in the pot for somebody help, or you know, do certain things for their people, or teach other young rappers that's coming up. You don't have to always say the B word. I love Heavy D. Heavy D didn't say all those curse words. Heavy D was more dancing and doing his thing. These hip hop pioneers need to sit down and have conversations with the young ones, the ones that's coming up now. Little X9. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't even want to comment on that. I really don't even want to say his name, to be honest with you. You do what you do over there, and we're going to do what we do over here. I'll tell you one thing, though. One, one book that really taught me about um, investment is a book that my brother shared with me called The Richest Man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Now, in this book, it was basically speaking about how, you know, a lot of us may be in debt or so forth and so on and, and, and have different different problems with getting our uh, head above water, so to speak. And in this book, it basically was talking about how to go and reach out to the people that you are in, in indebted to and, you know, piece them off. Say, listen, Give them the spill like, yo, listen, I'm having a rough time right now, but I can give you a little something and I keep giving you a little something over a week and over after a while, it'll, it will it will end up paying off the debt. And then once you do that, also another thing that it speaks about in the book is to start your purse to, to fatten it. Pay yourself, for, pay yourself first, right? So what does that mean? Paying yourself first means basically the, before you pay your bills and all of that, make sure you put a couple dollars in the cup for yourself. That's right. Okay. And start building up that money over time. And then when an opportunity comes up, like Coinbase, like Nas did, then you can actually take that money and invest it in, whether it be on a small scale or a larger scale. Or even, you know, 
with it's, it's certain ways that we could invest on a smaller level. Like my man E, he used to talk about his wife all the time when we was going through our little situation. He was telling he would tell me that his wife would go would go to the um to the different stores where they have bulk water. And in the summertime, she would buy the bulk water and just get on the train with a, with a tub full of water and just sell the waters. You know how much money that is? You is? Let's say you got 20, you got 20 waters, you only paid $5 for them, and you're selling the waters at $2 a piece, right? So this is just little micro investments that you can make to make money, and people overlook it, like, yo, I ain't selling no water, I ain't selling no t-shirts, or I'm not going to do this, or I'm not going to do that, but... That stuff can bring a little extra money in the pot at the end of the day. So it's just a different way of looking at different things. And um, I like to say that we are the table. A lot of people say that we need to get to the table, but I think that we are the table. Because within our community, there's different things that people buy on a regular basis that we're not investing in. We like to invest in stuff that people maybe don't want or lackluster products, but what about the stuff that we see people buying on a daily basis? Are we investing in that? I think that's something that we should look into. Mm -hmm. So our last topic for current events is an unfortunate topic. And this article is in the Amsterdam News. And it speaks about, you know, an ongoing topic in our community, the, the violence against those who are less likely to be able to protect themselves. And this article was in the Amsterdam News. It says community organizations speak out against violence on the elderly. So we got violence against women. We got violence against Asians. We got violence against the elderly. We got ongoing violence against black men. So it's just all of this different violence. So it says several community organizations came together in Harlem to denounce the violence against the elderly after a 75-year-old woman was attacked in Harlem on Sunday. Street Corner Resources Speak Peace Forward Cure Violence Team, led by Aisha Seku, held a press conference on Monday about the incident. The organization was joined by clergy, political, and civic leaders. On April 4th, reports indicate that Judith Thomas was walking on 119th Street and Malcolm X Boulevard to an Easter Sunday dinner when a random man punched her in the face. Thomas suffered injuries to her eye and jaw. Sekou said unprovoked violence has been on the rise in the city and is calling on community members to be on the lookout for violent acts. We can have stand idle by while um, violence is perpetuated against our elders, she said. Most of these attacks have been against vulnerable, unsuspecting pedestrians, many of them elderly women. I am asking that organizations neighborhood groups and community members do all they can to have an active presence in our community against violence. Wow. What do you think about that? I think we became weak. And the reason why I say that is because not too many, too many of us is really stand, is standing up. <clears throat> um, it hurts my heart to hear the violence against anyone on a regular basis, on the regular basis. And it's, and I believe after they let so many people home who have mental disorders, a lot of the people are not getting the services. They're not even being cared for properly at a lot of these shelters. People just out there just wilding wilding out um what what do we do we march we we get together for a day or two and then the next third day or the second day or the fourth day is the same thing all over again they got cameras i mean what else do we do Keep your eyes and ears open. I'll constantly say this. Keep your eyes and ears open. Pay attention. You know, somebody say something to you or you see that this individual is not looking too right, get out of the way. Um, one day I was at work and I went to the store and this guy came in and the guy was uh, 
the store helper was in the refrigerator putting the sodas in the freezer. And the guy says, he come in the store and say, get the F out of my way. <clears throat> so when I heard him say that to the guy, I was ready to walk out the store because what else can he do? If he just walking through the door, he's already saying that to the guy who's stocking the, the freezer. The guy didn't do anything. He's not even looking at him. He's stocking. But once again, when you see stuff that's not right, your gut, your, your gut feeling is telling you, get away, get away. Get away. You know, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I am always on alert when I'm walking down the street. Not to mention, if you there's any way for you to get some protection, get some protection. I don't know what else to say. It's so sad. We, we, you know, a lot of these organizations that's out there, they're doing a wonderful job at the corner resources. However, they can't be at every corner 24 hours a day. I agree. I agree. But you know, it has to be, it has to be something that's a disconnect because when I was growing up, this is something that is unheard of. Who will run around and, and just punch a random elderly person in the face? It has to be some type of disconnect. It has to be something yeah. where this person was nurtured in an environment where they have no compassion or respect or anything for the elderly. Because I look at elderly women like, listen, I want to help you across the street or something like that. Sometimes they may be offended by that. I've seen some elderly get offended by somebody saying, you know, looking at them as if they're infirm and want to help them across the street. But this is how I was raised. So I don't see what 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 is missing in the mental for a person to actually go ahead and punch an elderly person in the face, to bite this young lady in the face at the liquor store, to do all of these different things, right? There has to be something, some type of um, relationship with the environment that has made this person into a person with no compassion, is just callous, and would just do anything to anybody. You know, that, that's basically what we really want to talk about here today, because, right. you know, we went to we went to a rally the other day. Right. I received the um, I received a, a flyer the other day when I was at. OK, so we started a, co a coalition called the County Cullen Community Coalition with um, 140, uh, 49, I think it is 94, mm -hmm. 94 right. PS 194. Um, school. We started a community coalition. We're going to be bringing a lot of different services to the community in the near future. So look out for that. But anyway, in that meeting that I went to, I think it was on Monday, um, I received a flyer about, you know, the recent attack where the officer shot the young brother in the back after a traffic stop. And we were supposed to go there and speak about, you know, what the community was feeling about this issue. So we went out there. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I, you know, we had, we was busy, but we made time. I wanted to make time. My wife really didn't want to go, but you know, I dragged her with me and she came and, you know, she, she's supportive. So I wanted to go because I was really feeling some sort of way about the stuff that's going on. How you continuously having these attacks on our people, even while a trial of this magnitude, as we just spoke about the children's trial is going on. This new event is right in that same area. This is in Minnesota, this new attack that where this lady shot this young brother. And she was arrested, thankfully. But anyway, we, we went to the rally. And within this rally, the first thing that we noticed was mm. it was a young black brother in a wheelchair at the front of the room when we came in the rally. And he was speaking about his book. He was speaking about how when he was younger, maybe about 13 years old, himself and a friend were playing with a gun and the friend shot him and paralyzed him for life. So the people that were running the event were hyping it up, like really emphasizing this point that he was shot by his friend in the neighborhood of the Bronx. And they were basically saying that, why is there no outcry when people when, when, when people are shooting, shooting each, other each other in these neighborhoods? And there's a big outcry when cops were shooting or, you know, brutalizing black people. And, you know, I had to tell them, like, yo, listen, these are two totally different arguments because both things are wrong. Number one, 
But for, on the first hand, you have crime that is within a community that's impoverished. And then on the second hand, you have people that are supposed to serve and protect the neighborhood that are actually committing acts of violence and crime. So how can you equate things that are happening in the neighborhood with things that are happening with the people who are supposed to serve and protect the neighborhood and are paid for by taxes? And my wife got up and gave a very a very in-depth speech about, <laughs> listen, we pay, we pay taxes here. We pay our salaries, basically. So how are you going to say, how are you going to say that, um, how are you going to say that, um, that it is all right for you to do these things that you're doing in our community when if it wasn't for the community, you wouldn't have a job. So basically, this is the this is this this is the debate. And it got me to thinking about, you know, nature versus nurture. Because people are constantly say, okay, well, y'all doing all of this violence and stuff in your neighborhood, but y'all don't y'all don't see that as an issue. But anytime somebody else commits something against you, it's a big issue. And, it's, and, and it made me think like, yo, listen, the reason why, what is the reason why we're having all of this violence in our community? Is this something that is ingrained within us? Or is this something that is being um, facilitated by the different conditions in our environment? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we're gonna talk about now. And you know, it made me think back to a movie that many of us may have seen when we were younger. Right, this movie is called Trading Places, and you see the picture of Trading Places on our flyer. But this movie, this movie is a comedy, and many people, you know, may have laughed about the movie or so forth and so on. But I don't know if they really understood the message that was in the movie, because the message speaks to this whole debate of nature versus nurture. So right now, I'm gonna play a clip, real quick, um, from the movie. And you'll see why I say that this movie has a grander um, topic that they're speaking about. Can you see? Yes, I see it. All right. I can't hear it though. You can't hear it? Unless they're not speaking right now. They wasn't speaking. Can you hear it? I hear it. So basically, can you um, break it down? Because I can't hear the word. I mean, I can't hear. It. So you couldn't hear that? No, I can't hear it. I don't know. I if anybody else can hear it, um, please give a one up on the comment because I couldn't really hear anything. So would you be able to break that down? Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to play it again. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now?
They're not twerking, so it's probably louder than anything. You hear me now? It's really low. So, basically, in that clip, you had the two Duke brothers, right, who are, you know, the, 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 the main owners of a stock market business, right? They're stock brokers, and they're the, they're, the, they're the ones who founded the business, and they made a $1 bet that they could make one, a, one person who worked for their company as a broker, they could make him turn into a criminal and a degenerate right and they could take a person who was actually living on the streets and committing crimes and turn him into an upstanding citizen and it was a one dollar bet right so this speaks to the argument of nature versus nurture was this person living in the street because it was their natural inclination to be nobody or was this person that was working in the stock market could he be changed by nurturing him and taking away everything that he know and loves to be a criminal so this is the age-old argument of nature versus nurture mm -hmm. so what do you think about that and what's your breakdown on that First of all, that's pretty deep because I don't know if everybody was able to hear that, but they said that they would not allow a nigga to run a business. So with that, and this is in a movie, and this movie is forever years old. I really wish I could ask Eddie Murphy, did he know what um, the concept of the movie you know, I did not, I watched the movie myself as a youngin, and I really didn't understand until now when you brought it to my attention and we got into the, the topic and the conversation on it, and I definitely understand, and plus all the stuff that's going on now, it blend right on in there. To get a better insight, they took the black dude from a homeless situation and he he turned the stock market into something great when they sat there and had a, a Caucasian person in there and he was being ran by the business and took him out. Now he's the homeless person. And I hope people go back and actually look at this movie and pay attention and, and, dis, and, and really have a better understanding of what it was going on. So now that man, the Caucasian man who's now homeless, he started wilding out. <laughs> he started, he went to the to the job and he came with the gun and he wanted to. And this is what we as as black people are going through. Like once you take the resources from us, what now we on survival um mode. You know, we you, they just was talking about taking away, shutting down public assistance or whatever the case might be. 
what are we going to do? You know, a lot of parents are inhibited. <laughs> a lot of parents are still right now today on public assistance and their children's on public assistance and their children's on public assistance, even though they should be in school doing what they got to do. But this is their mean of getting money or those same children that's on a corner selling drugs are from the uncle and the brothers and the fathers that was selling drugs at one point survival mode. Right. Right. So now once we take away this, uh, the, 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 the resource, now you don't know what to do. Now you become a prostitute. You become a drug dealer. You become a, 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 a murderer. Cause now you're wilding. You don't have no money in the house, no food in the house. We used to have skillful trainings in the schools. We don't even have that. How to cook, how, you know, the bakery. I remember 195, they was teaching us how to bake cakes and cookies and this and this home health aid. Uh, if I'm if I'm saying it right. Um, well, home economics, home economics used to right. have that stuff going on. Now you don't have that going on. It's just everything is getting taken away. But when you go into other schools, Catholic, probably they probably have these things going on. So I have an article right here from Psychology Today, and this should break down a little bit more what we're speaking about when we're speaking about nature versus nurture. And in this article, it says the expression nature versus nurture describes the question of how much a person's characteristics are formed by either their nature or nurture. Nature means the innate biological factors, namely genetics, while nurture can refer to the upbringing or life experience more generally. Traditionally, nature versus nurture has been framed as a a debate between those who argue for the the dominance of one source of influence or the other, but contemporary experts acknowledge that both nature and nurture play a role in the psychological development and interact in complex ways. So basically what they're saying in that passage right there is that either either you are being influenced by what you were born with mm-hmm. right which is your genetics your genetic code what was passed down from you to your from your parents to you all the mm-hmm. way through your different family members to you right mm-hmm. this is your nature this is your innate genetics right mm-hmm. this is what you were born to do and be right versus what is considered nurture, which is the environment, your upbringing, your schooling, your uh, resources, everything that everything of the above that can influence you into who you grow up to be. Right. So what they're saying is in this article, they're saying that it can't be just one cut and dry thing. It's not specifically your nature and it's not specifically your nurture. It's both of these things interacting that makes us into the people that we are, right? So the meaning of nature versus nurture, the wording of the phrase nature versus nurture makes it seem as though human individuality, personality traits, intelligence, preferences, and other characteristics must be based on either the genes of people are born with or the environment which they grew up in. The reality, as scientists have shown, is more complicated, and both these and other factors can help account for the many ways in which individuals differ from each other. So right. speaking of that, let's go back to let's go back to the movie, right? In the movie, Eddie Murphy was taken out of the situation that he was in. Right. Which he was Mm -hmm. homeless, begging for money, running scams, whatever he was doing to get money. And he was given an opportunity to have a beautiful home, a butler, a car service and a wonderful job. Right. And once he was in that space, he was a little peculiar to him at first. You know, he like, yo, it's real. He start taking stuff, putting it in the pocket. (laughs) Like, nah, you ain't got to worry about this. Hold it down. This is yours. This is your this is your new this is your new life, basically. Fix my life like Ayala Van Zandt, but really just fixed his whole situation up. So now he's he's doing his thing. 
first thing he went and did, he went and got a whole bunch of people from the bar. Yo, Billy Ray is in the house. Everything's on me. Started paying. Then he brought a bunch of people to his house. They had the beautiful party and all of that. And mm -hmm. everything was jumping on. But then when he seen all the people in his house tearing things up and all that, he was like, yo, wait, you know wait, what? Wait, wait. Yep. Hold up. What you, what you doing? Y'all got to get out, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, long story short, he goes to the job and he starts to excel in the stock market, mm -hmm. right? So if he was such a, 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 a worthless individual that was homeless because it was his nature to be homeless, why was he able to excel in the stock market in this way with no formal training? Hmm. So this defeated the argument that it was nature that deemed him to be that way. It showed that anybody not anybody but most people if they are given the right resources and the right um coaching or the right nurturing environment then they can excel they can be way better and then what the person who was this upstanding citizen with his nose in the air and all of this everything was taken away from him right and he had to resort to crime to survive so what are we talking about here? Look at our communities, right? We have communities in which the living environment is not up to par, right? We have lackluster homes. We mm -hmm. have lackluster um, neighborhoods, right? We have a school environments that are not peak, right? They're not good schools that we're sending our children to, right? We have bad hospitals. We got police that's coming around our neighborhoods and terrorizing us. We got all of these things that are nurturing us to be callous individuals. But when it comes time to find out what exactly make our neighborhood look this way, people just looked at the act of the individual, like the person who did this to that person in our neighborhood, as opposed to all of these other social things that are making this environment this way. Right. Right. Right, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I see comment. I see a comment. Um, I want to read off that comment, and this is what some of the things that we're talking about. First of all, let's go back. So, back in slavery days, we was the best of the best because it's in us, it's in our genes, right? To so not everything that. For example, when we purchase something, we don't have to read the manual because we already know in, in our minds, put this, 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 right? And we do it. Now, we might go to the manual probably one or two times because we want to make sure that this nut, this boat, this, 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 go in the right place. But otherwise that, we got it. So even back in slavery days, we built what? We built a lot of stuff. And we didn't have no manual. We just had tools and telling us what, what they want us to do. Or we, we design it ourselves. Everything we, we do, and we excel. We excel. And this is what a lot of them is afraid of and trying to keep us oppressed and keep us down and keep us not believing that we could make things matter. Right? This book behind me. With my sister and myself. We put this book together ourselves. One thing we needed to do is get somebody to um, format it the right way. But this is something that we did ourselves. So not every time we need somebody to tell us how to do it. Just let tell us what you want and we're going to make it happen. Back in our slavery days, this is our genes. This is us. This is how we, we are great people. Right. But then when you take the resources away from us and we don't have no money, no income, we're jacked up. We right. homeless now. We 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 living in low poverty situations. We living with rats, roaches and everything else. But must believe if we had the opportunity to get out of that situation, we'll make the best of it. So here right. we go. Somebody who lives in Pennsylvania, she said, like out here in schools, that's mostly white. They have swim, home economics, fashion design, a wood shop. But in our schools, with our people, we barely have music class. I remember we used to have music class. Mm, they don't have music class anymore? 
We used to have music class. We have we used to have cooking classes. We used to have karate. I try to take every class in the world when I was in 195. <laughs> they even have karate. They self defense courses. They had all this stuff. And this is when the in the eighties. What happened? They used to have PAL for the kids to come and have a good time and be safe about it. We, I don't even think we have that anymore. So with that being said, now you, you're looking at us like we're monsters. We, you know, we the, we the worst species out here, but you just took everything from us. But guess what, my people? We allow it to get taken away from us. And the reason why I say that, we have some great professional writers out here. We need to, uh, first of all, a lot of us don't do this, uh, what, is, what, is, what is it called when it just came out? The censors. We, a lot of us don't do the censors. How would they know what programs they need to fund if you're not putting in the information that we need this? We need to get together, write a letter to Board of Ed and let them know, put these things back into the school systems. Our children minds are not even on the school work no more. They're not on that no more because when they leave out of school or sometime in the school, they still getting killed. I mean, come on. Majority of the kids want to leave out the house because they're tired of being in the house. But school don't really have their attention uh, uh, with uh, most of these kids because you're not giving them no substance. No real substance. You're not giving them the understanding of what you're in here for. I was one. I was like, man, listen. <laughs> I think I played more spades than anything. <laughs> <laughs> in the lunchroom, you know. <laughs> but when I got older, I realized, oh my goodness, I need to get back in school. Cause what what kind of job I'm going to get? Retail for the rest of my life? Or I used to be a janitor at at, at American Museum of Natural History. It was good money, but guess what? That wasn't my thing for the rest of my life. Pushing a broom and dustpan when people talking down to me and treating me like. I was the worst thing ever. No, I went to school and I got myself two degrees while I was in that, at that job for 12 years. I made a difference. And when I wanted to leave, that when they dismissed me, I dismissed them. And that's why a lot of people say they appreciate and they love the way I did that. I gave them my two weeks notice, said peace. So we have to take back our control by getting the right, by being around the right people who can make things happen. Right. So, you know, I was really, I was extremely alarmed by what they were trying to do with that rally the other day. And like, they was trying to basically make it say that it's okay for these officers to be killing us because we're killing ourselves, ourselves not community, right? right? And I'm saying that that is just that is a ridiculous argument, right? That goes into the whole nature versus nurture. This whole thing has been going on and on and on yes. and on and on with this nature versus nurture for centuries now. And the whole way to make a slave, in order to make a slave, you have to bring a person down to their lowest existence and mm -hmm. make them think that they were born to be that way, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they had to do to us because where we came from where we came from it was actually up at that time what do i mean well we had people like Mansa musa who was considered to be the richest man ever alive right who came from places where we came from western africa right what they call now africa right we came from an existence where we were living at the top of civilization and we were broken down to be slaves. And now they have confused us to think that it's innate within us to be slaves. Mm -hmm. So we got some special guests. We got yeah. some special guests who just popped up in the building, you okay. know. And I definitely want to introduce our guests so they could give their input on this topic. You know, this is Speak Your Mind podcast with the Ali's. 
So first, I want to introduce my beautiful sister and the co-author of I Am Phenomenal. This is Kwanisha Gatewood. Aw. Hi. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We I'm not going to show myself because it's Sunday, you know. I'm looking <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be on, but let's do this. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to talk. Sorry. Hold on. Before you, let me bring the other guest on before you speak about that. Oh. So next we have a phenomenal brother that's actually nurturing our youth in Brooklyn in a phenomenal way. He's changing their existence as we speak with the things that he's doing in the community. He has his own school. You hear what I'm talking about? He's yes. not waiting for anybody to fund him. He's funding it himself, and he's actually raising these youth to be the greatness that they were born to be. There you go. So next, I want to give I want to give amazing, amazing welcome to my brother Q Butter. I knew it was him. Peace. Peace. Yo, what's good, y'all? My bad. What's good, Black family? What's goody? What's goody? What's goody? Everything is great, man. Everything is great, man. It's great to see you, man. I'm, 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 I'm definitely, I'm definitely elated that I get to see a, a beautiful brother in our, in our attendance today on this beautiful day for the Speak Your Mind podcast with the Ali's. My brother, my brother, Uncle Mark, Mark Maffee is in the building, so he definitely gonna be happy to see you on, on the panel as well. So, you know, I we brought y'all in. I don't know if you was able to hear what we was talking about, but we're talking about the debate between nature versus nurture. And we spoke about trading places in that movie and how they showed within that movie that it's not the nature of the person, it's how they're nurtured that mm -hmm. makes them to be who they came out to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's excellent that you came in because we wasn't sure if you was going to be able to come in today. So it's excellent that both of y'all are actually here because, you know, my sister and, and my wife, they came up with the book, I Am Phenomenal, that's helping people to dig deep within themselves, and you're actually doing the work. So I want to hear from both of y'all. So go ahead, uh, Kwanisha, Kwanisha, you could go first. Yes, ma'am. Oh, with the when you was talking about um, um, the schools and right. the difference between the schools between the Caucasian neighborhoods and our neighborhoods, um, I moved out here to PA after I already finished high school and my little sisters is showing me their rosters and is fashion design, home economics, um, wood workshop, uh, swimming. My brother taught me how to swim. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and these kids got the classes for it. And I mean, like, I went to the school, beautiful, big swimming pool, a football field, I didn't. I got lost. I was like, well, "Where are we going?" Like in our school, <laughs> soon you go in, it's the cafeteria. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you, you really can't get lost in our schools. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and then um, yeah, we we barely got music programs. I mean, right. we got it, but if you don't got no instruments, you don't got an instructor to actually care about music. They sitting there teaching you songs that you learned in church already, just to say they did something. We really don't have music class. Mm -hmm. it's just something to fill the report card it's just something wow. you know what i mean like it's an easy it's an easy a you mm -hmm. can pass that by humming a tune with the teacher and you good ain't that song even you know in newburgh my my other you know little cousin she also um well we drop we drove by and she was like oh that's so and so um school and I'm like this big old castle looking <laughs> with this big old football spot green grass mm -hmm. you know you can't bring no dogs in that grass I was <laughs> like oh my goodness here it is we got schools that look like they are um um ju 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 juvenile you know <laughs> with the with the gate around it or the right. window you're like what the hell what what you happened got Right. I remember going into the metal detectors every day. Me too. Taft High School. Right. <laughs> That's where I started off at. Taft High School. We had to go through the metal detectors. You beep. Here we go. You got the, you the gotta hand wands now. Right. You right. got to get pat down after that if you're still beeping. Like, and that's something that we just grew accustomed to, which is crazy. Right. Because we shouldn't have to grow accustomed to that at 14 years old. Right. right. We coming through the door at 12 and 13. Absolutely. I want to get my brother in here, cute butter. So come on, <sighs> what, what say you about this? What 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 made you want to create uh, a school, school for our youth and 
you know, nurture our, our youth to do something different? Responsibility. Um, it didn't really make sense to me when I was in school myself. Is even I was like mad ignorant, not even really like <laughs> that evolved in my consciousness to just like being around these white folks. The food, the food was one of the first things for me that didn't make sense. It was like, mm. what are y'all feeding me? It went from like eating all this soul food and all this good food, seeing my mom's make in the morning, and then to going pizza. to regular school. Not even the pizza, you got like a fish stick with some milk. Like, who eats <laughs> fish and milk? You know chocolate I mean? milk. <laughs> and you got chocolate milk and pizza on the same day. And it's like, yeah. and then it was some old next nastiness. And then I got this white lady yelling at me. Then this next white person yelling at me. And then my, uh, the first time I kind of saw my parents act different was when I was around these white folks. And it was like, it was just a lot of things that didn't, that didn't click to me. And as I went through school, a lot of my experiences with people that were really white, or even trying to be white weren't really that cultivating for me. And so it is, you know, and then when I got to my light, later years in high school, the white folks that I met were like, kind of like the white rejects. <laughs> I went to this one high school that was like, they were all like, it was a, it was a really, it was an alternative school. I got a lot of high school trouble in high school, my first in Grady. And so I got kicked out of there and I wound up going to this alternative school as my only option. And the white folks in there was mad different. But of course, the one who helped me the most was a black man who died named Chico wow. and rest in peace. And he and his other um, teacher there, I kind of made a promise like, yo, I'm gonna open up my own school. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Like, I'm gonna show you how to get to people like me because I ain't got this right. And so that was always in my mind. And, you know, just thinking about education, I was like introduced to being a 5 percenter being very early in my life. My father's, <laughs> you know, my father's influence on me was monumental in the, in the idea of like what education is and the purpose of education and what you want to do with it. And, you know, the levelness that he kind of gave me. And then I got a lot of trouble in high school. I graduated on Rikers Island. And mm. so the only reason I was able to graduate on Rikers Island was because of Chico, the man who worked at that school. And one of the philosophies I have just this quarter that we just introduced to the students to that no one's allowed to fail. So, that's it. Like, you're not allowed to fail. So like the kids are like, what do you mean? And I'm like, you have to do the work. So you got to do this weekend. And the parents are like, oh, so you mean they can't? I'm like, no, you can't fail. And that was the whole premise as to why I was able to graduate on Rikers Island. He was like, look, I don't really care what you're going through. You fighting a murder case. People are getting stabbed and sliced. You have to finish school. And stay and, focused. You know, you know, and he set that tone and he cursed out the the, uh, the warden, the C-74, yelled at them and me. I was in this private room by myself taking a test. And these little experiences, you know, kind of uh, um, led me to where it was. When I went to Mega Evers College, um, I used to be very much, you know, vocal about my Caribbean background and stuff. But when I got to Mega Evers College, I was kind of disgusted as to the experience I had and the naiveness that um, much of the population of Mega Evers, you know, profess to know about Black Americans mm. and the plight of Black Americans. And so, like, I couldn't get a student loan in there because they was like, yo, you get financial aid. I'm like, bro, I got my own apartment. Financial aid is covering school. I got, my rent is thirteen to 15000 a year. This is like 12 years ago. So I'm like, I don't make that much. I'm 25 years old. The hell, hey, I mean, that's all the money I'll make. And I'm working at, what I was working at, oh, I don't know, one of the retail stores. So, you know, that. All of these things go into like the concept of education to me. And so school is just one part of what it means to develop a society that's educated and the, the pieces that go inside of it. You know, it's, right. it's, you know, I often teach and when I do lectures, I talk about like the circuit and in order to make a circuit, all the components have to work. That's and right. Oftentimes, you know, people look at things linearly versus looking at it like, you know, like they say holistically, like all of the mm -hmm. components have to work. And right. so the banking system, the black bank system has completely been decimated. It went from a hundred banks, like if that many banks, you know, a couple of years ago, right. in like 1999 to like, there's like 14, I think now, or 15, I don't know what number it is, but it's they tr trickling, trickling, trickling. Mm -hmm. And black banks money is based off of black education, mm. Mm. you know? And what we think about the experiences that our students have in the school system, the schools that you are seeing are in districts where the people who have high property value, who pay higher taxes for their properties, 
have the ability to afford more for their schooling because taxes, exactly. you know, so if you don't make enough money, you won't make pay a high property taxes. You can't expect to have a quality school system. Mm. Right. You know, and so the, the only way to make more money is education. So mm -hmm. you have two things tied together. Your school is a benefit from those who are who make money and pay this type of tax. The only way to pay this type of tax is if you make a certain amount of money. The only way to make that type of money is if you're educated. The only way to blank bank, the black banks sustain themselves is if you have a wealth of people who are educated. And when we say educated, you can do something mm -hmm. and you can thrive and, and live off of what you do to the point of profitability. You know, it's one thing to be able to say, I went to school. It's another thing to say, like, I'm a media broadcaster and I pay all my bills off of this. Or, you know, I'm, I'm a I met a shoe shiner, a, a dude whose grandfather was a well-known shoe shiner from Times Square. He made like a million. I don't know how much millions he made, you know, and everybody does this black guy shining shoes. He charged thirty dollars a shoe yeah. and was able to do yeah. it in 10 minutes. Right. You just do the math. He's doing ninety dollars minimum, you know. Yep. To one hundred and twenty dollars an hour, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, day. if I'm not mistaken, at the like back in the days, like this was supposed to be some of the top jobs for our people down in down in um Midtown and all of that. Yeah, wow. these were some mm -hmm. people. People had to fight to get those shoe sign spots in, yeah. in, in front of these businesses on downtown and all of that. So what he's saying is definitely correct. Because the options, the options for our employment wasn't that vast. Right. So being somebody like a shoe shiner or somebody working for the train system or all of these service jobs, that was looked at as the top mm -hmm. for our And they switched it on us. Now they made it look like it was bad. So everybody like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what 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 basically I see it, I see the brother saying is, is that in the black communities, we have what they call a negative feedback loop. Mm -hmm. Right. We're producing people that can't get good jobs. And in turn, by them not having any good jobs, they can't bring in the revenue for taxes so that they can't get good schools. So now well, that we're producing them. there's no good school. So now we're reproducing this whole thing. And it's a loop. Now, in the other side, right, they're producing people. Now, one thing that I learned because I was raised, I was raised upstate in Sullivan County is that these white kids, they go and they are taught from preschool. Mm. Right. A lot of people, people look at um 3K and pre-K. They look at like this is not a big debate, but it really is because it's a heads up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You are groomed by going to pre-K. Right. So that you got a heads up when you go to kindergarten and every grade after that, you are one step above. So now what does this mean? By the time we get to high school, right, uh, students that I went to school with in pre-K, they are in college prep and advanced prep classes. So when they go to college, they are ready for the college realm. However, us, we're in SP classes, meaning that it's regular classes. And when we go to college, now we have to take high school classes in college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see the difference? This is the, this is this is how this whole thing is set up. Now, the last thing I wanted to say before I pass it back to you guys is the real thing about education that people don't pay attention to is the root of the word education comes from educe or educari, which means to draw out. Mm hmm. Right. So we're not really pushing information into people, so to say we're helping people to develop the tools to actually be able to utilize the information when they get it. So this is goes into the whole nature versus nurture argument. Are you nurturing people to be able to utilize the information to make themselves better? Mm -hmm. Or are you nurturing them to be in an environment where they can't do anything? Right. Right. So this this debate could go on and go on and go on because at the end of the day, Q Butter, salute to you, brother, for starting up uh, your own school and understanding from your um, experiences in your life to actually say, you know what, I want to do something for my people, my my children, because they are your children now. <laughs> Basically, anybody that come through that door, those are your children. Um, shout out to you for doing a wonderful job. I have seen you on different platforms and um, 
Shout out to you, brother. That's all I'm going to say with that. Um, shout out to my sister who's on and um, sharing the difference because she is a Bronx, Bronx raised, Bronx right. woman, you know. I was native, but Bronx <laughs> raised. I'll, right, I'll, exactly. I'll, I'll shout out my Harlem side too. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so with that being said, she have um, had the opportunity to move out of here and go up to PA and see the difference. And that's when she's like, wait, hold up. This is not what I'm used to, you know? And is it, do they want us to move? Cause I remember back in the day, they wanted a lot of people from Harlem to move to the Bronx. I don't know if anybody remember that out of article way back. And mm. you mentioned that they want a lot of Harlem people to move to the Bronx. And 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 let's think about it. The Bronx is a little cheaper than Harlem. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but Harlem, I mean, the Bronx got a lot of issues up there too. Right. You know, they rate of everything, COVID and everything else is opioid really, really use, opioid, HIV, everything diabetes, hypertension, right. everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. So is it because the you know, they know Harlem have something good over here and they want to try to come back. And well, they are coming back and, and and turn this into something for themselves. I bet you 10 years later, they're going to have a lot of things happening or a lot of schools going to be changing over to certain things. Because why those type of people see and they make it happen like Q butter. He's seen, he went through it. And now he's making a difference by starting up his own school. So if we came together and say, hey, our children need X, Y, and Z going on, and we want this done. Because sitting back and just complaining about it ain't going to help. We right. need more Q butter uh, schools around. We need more of those. We have more, I think, I think he's going to agree on this one. We got more churches. Uh-huh. I was watching. There's a lot of churches that's hardly being filled up. It's like two or three people, but they need to turn that into something else. Turn that into many schools for us. I don't know, but at the end of the day, he know what I'm talking about because I, I watched one of his episodes when he talked about it. <laughs> so right. let's get back. <laughs> let's get back. So, so Quanisha, I want to hmm. I want to know what what do you see as the difference with, as far as living in Harlem where it's a majority or in the Bronx where it's a majority black population as opposed to living in PA where it's a majority white population. <laughs> what what different things do you see? When I moved out here, I thought it was weird to talk to a white person that wasn't a teacher. Mm. I thought it, I, I didn't know how to talk to like oh I got to talk to this person. I'm standing at the bus stop and this person's talk. Why are you talking to me? Like, that's not what we do. Like, right. we don't talk to each other at this, unless you know me. Like, we don't mm. talk to each other at the bus stop. Who is this person? I mm. see such a difference now. I moved here, well, 11 years ago in 2010 when I finished school, I moved out here and I see more of a difference now. They don't want us here. They didn't want us here 10 years ago, but they really don't want us here now because why they moving all the people that that's on parole, the people that are trying to start their life over and they move out here to the small towns. And mm. now these white people is like, now we got all these black people that got effed up passes and they, they, they destroying our neighborhood, but they're not. I know I told Shanice the other day, I know more white drug dealers than black drug dealers out here. Mm. <laughs> mm. I do. I know more. I, I see more. We was driving to work the other day and this I don't know what it was. I couldn't even tell what it was. Woman or man looked crazy, strung out. That's the worst I've ever seen somebody. And I was raised in the Bronx. Mm. Like, that's just the stature that we got in the Bronx. And, oh, all the crackheads, all the drug dealers, all the... But mm -hmm. not out here? Whoa. Like, whoa. I've never seen... I've never seen as much craziness as out here than I did in the Bronx. Like, <laughs> wow. it, I mean, it, it, I don't know. I, don't, I That's why I was telling Shanice, I got to go back home and visit. I got to be, I got to, you know what I mean? I got to get back because out here messes your head up a little mm. bit. Mm. They do. They mess your head up. You, you know, I work with a lot of Caucasian people and one of which can't stand me. 
can't stand me. I mean, like, I ain't never do nothing to this lady a day in her life. I, I come in and I go to work. But because I come in and I work and I work more than the average person does and I care more than the average person does taking care of these people. Why? Wow. Because she's scared I'm going to steal her job. Mm. Wow. So Q, Hold on, let me I'm going to ask you, um, uh -oh. how important do you think it is for a person to be raised in an environment where not only education is celebrated, but black history and black intelligence. Is he there? Yeah, he's there. Yeah, my bad. I walked away. Um, that's vital to any nation. Like, if you look at any nation, they celebrate their, their national heroes. They celebrate their history. They they put a lot of tr uh, pride into their to the traditions and to the to the events that set forth or, or that happened to make sure that happened or occurred rather occurred to bring forth their nation. And so. That's with any people, you know what I mean? Like, you got Chinese celebrate everything they do. Like, how much martial arts movies they make to celebrate <laughs> Kung Fu. Kung Fu and all that shit ain't even popping. Like, let's get that real. Like, Kung Fu... And <laughs> what you mean? Seen. What you mean it's not popping? Like, if a person mm. jump out and, and try to do some Kung Fu joint... You, they, listen. They, yeah, this is the internet. That The internet, they, Chinese people had the world thinking that all of them can fight. That's <laughs> bullshit. You know, I I'm sorry. I ain't gonna be it's a BS, <laughs> like mixed martial arts. That's the real term. Like you get, you start hammer punching. They got <laughs> combinations and stuff, but it don't look like it doing the movie with the, you know, it ain't right. the that. dragon. <laughs> they had a fool, bro. Like it's true <laughs> to build that pride up in their own stuff to make people feel like. Not saying that some of that martial. I'm not saying it ain't real. I might get my ass kicked. By <laughs> but they had us thinking that every some young boy and whatever they ting bong can do the, do the martial arts and like, <laughs> nah, that that ain't that. And so Jews promote they they've been reading their history, but thousands they they walk around reading they like much as anybody else want to talk about the Bible that the Torah that's their stuff. Like, I mean they they even walk around that for a long time. Everybody keeps their stuff. The Native Americans, the Native Indians, um, excuse me, Native Americans and the natives of the Americas, they um practice their culture. And that keeps pride. And so our youth have to see pride in ourselves. They have to celebrate their heroes. And we have to know the atrocities that we overcame to get us where we are. And we got to celebrate those things with pride. Like, no, this is how we got here. I don't care about what these white folks tell you to celebrate. We need to celebrate our own stuff. Harriet right. Tubman is a god to us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, celebrate Harriet Tubman's shotgun. All the students should know what caliber shotgun she had, what type of shotgun she had, how she liked to shoot. They should know all about what, what Marcus Garvey drank and, and the mistakes he might have made and, the, and the, the, the good decisions he did and the business endeavors we did. They should know all about, you know, I met so many black students who've never heard of Elijah Muhammad. And I'm like, yeah. how? Like, he's done, he's created one of America's largest and most ranking movements like like outside of the Ku Klux Klan like the Ku Klux Klan and the Nation of Islam not comparing them in ideologies but in the sense of nations that were birthed in America mm -hmm. that have influenced the shape of America mm -hmm. and for a black person to know the KKK and not know the Nation of Islam yeah that's crazy when they produce Louis Farrakhan, Malcolm X, not that they could reach shapes, Muhammad Ali, some of the greatest minds floating Allah around. Allah Father, word. Allah Father, what it did for hip hop, like that's crazy to me. Like that's crazy. Like that is, like how could you not know that? How could you not know who the Israelites are? Mm -hmm. Like we wouldn't have a conscious community without the nation of Islam and the Israelites and, you, and, and some of the rosters and everybody else you mix in. So when I meet students, like I take pride in that. Like, no, I'm an atheist. I love the Israelites. I love my black conscious community and the religions we have in our stuff because that's what ours are. How, how could you not know about the black church? You know what I mean? And the history that the black church has in the development of black America. You know, how could you not know about these things? And if you don't take pride in it, that's also what set me off when I said I was at Mega Evers. Because mm -hmm. at Mega Evers, the Caribbean pride is so high. And a lot of the negative stigmas is also just as parallel, parallel the, the height of that, you know, and they, they match the height. And so 
for me hearing some of these these ignorant statements about black america they saw me with my locks i'm always playing reggae music you know what i mean I, I look caribbean i guess whatever that means and they're like all right so you would hear people talk about black america. i'm like yo bro like i have a black i have a family member in every american war like i'm ados as it gets like as anybody else you know like i got one grandmother who's jamaican i held on to that from flatbush i was jamaican as hell because of that one grandmother but <laughs> I'm Jamaica. You know what I mean? Like I had my that was when I was having my identity issue. And when I got mm -hmm. in there and I saw people arguing about which island was the best mm -mm. and the Caribbean Student Association, then when I got the Mega Evers, they was doing that. And I was just like, yo, like these are all pit stops from slavery. Like we don't remember the native names of these places. We don't remember the native tongues that we spoke in these places mm -hmm. and the colonization that happened that put us in these different spots that mixed us up in the ways that we have. If we don't study that and acknowledge that and understand it, then we're going to be having these conversations about, oh, Jamaica's better than Haiti. No, Black America's better than this one. Oh, Ados don't belong with these people. That's because of ignorance and people who are taught misplaced pride in the Black mm -hmm. movement. You know, and it's wow. like, you know, you're taking pride in being Jamaican over being Black. Mm -hmm. You know, you got people from Venezuela who don't even want to say they're Black. You know what I mean? Like, you got people that make it, it just... That's all that all of that is history. All of that is social studies. You know, I take a lot of pride in this, in the subject itself of social studies because that that's what's supposed to be there. Like I often tell people a white person can't teach a black child social studies. I because agree. The, the purpose of social studies is to develop an individual who can survive, thrive, and produce for society. Mm. Right. That's a good point. So would you say that, okay? We started this conversation with the whole nature versus nurture argument, right? And we talked about how, you know, they was up in arms in Harlem because a young black brother punched the old lady in the face. So would you say that because we're not being taught our history and pride within our community, that this contributes to us having a lack of empathy and sympathy and love for other people in our community we look at other people in our community as if they ain't nothing and we'll do anything to them because we're not taught to have any type of honor for our people that's a fact mm. Yeah. Mm. i believe so, it too just like recycling just as simple as you know when i meet children who don't recycle i know their parents don't recycle. if your child doesn't know what the blue bag is It's, you know, true. it's the same thing like you know i mean if your child doesn't if you don't teach your child respect if you don't teach your child reverence of rules and then understanding of rules and not from the government standpoint but from the perspective of you know our community and like if your if your son doesn't know that when he sees a woman crossing the street to stop and help her or to help a pregnant woman up that's the parents and then you would now we got to analyze the parents and it's like oh you didn't learn that and mm -hmm. it's like oh all right well you didn't learn that because of this person Right. I will, you know, we got to clean all of those pieces up, but we do need to identify the point when a person didn't learn it and who didn't teach it because mm -hmm. that's where accountability comes in. Like, all right, you know, you didn't learn it. <clears throat> now we're going to teach you how to do it because you're going to repeat those mistakes. That's right. And I, mm -hmm. and I think that the recidivism that we see in certain activities is because we weren't nurtured and if you look at business nurturing, in order to get certain homes, you have to go to a certain class. So that way they can know that you have been mentally nurtured to be able to be prepared for the um the the the, the process of owning a home. There you right. Go. That's sure. right. Mm -hmm. You no, know, so it's the same thing to me in any activity. And I think some people call it, you know, coddling, and they're like, oh, black people gotta be coddled too much, but the reality is. So what? Like I coddle the hell out my students, like as much as possible. I'm tough as hell. But what's wrong with you know spoiling our community, coddling our community, and highlighting the love that we have for ourselves? Because there's so much negativity that's always being permeated, right. perpetuated. So we need to promote that as much as possible. It's because true. There's a, there's there's a lot of kids who would punch a kid in an old a old lady in the mouth. Right, and then you know mm -hmm. he, with the homes too. Like you know, once your parent is calling you. A little nigga, the B word, you ain't nothing, you ain't never gonna amount to nothing. These things really, really take a toll in your mind and, and really, really, you start believing you stupid, you know, all these words. And, you know, please forgive me, but those are the things I have heard. 
mm-hmm. you know, I have heard. And what I done was I excelled because you're not going to call me stupid no more because, you know, I went to school. I did what I had to do. I got a business. I got a, a book, you know, with my sister. So it's so many. I wanted to pr- improve my do better for myself. Right. I'm not going to allow but you, you know, to have the power to call me those things no more. I'm sorry. It could have went either way, though. Mm-hmm. You know, it could have went, you're going to believe that, and that's exactly what you believe, and nobody could tell you anything different because the person that raised you, because the person you looked up to, the person you're supposed to trust the most, said it to you throughout your whole life. It could have went either way. Mm-hmm. And that's why I would never teach a kid, sticks and stones may break, break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. That's a lie. Mm-hmm. That's an excuse for people to say whatever they want to say to you, and you're supposed to accept it because it's not supposed to hurt your feelings. That's mm-hmm. not, that's a lie. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. would never say that to a kid. That's what we was raised up. Sticks and stones. No, 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 no. Words hurt you way more. You could, you could, you could heal from a bruise. You could go ahead and put that cast on when your leg is broken and give it time and it'll heal. But those words is always going to stick with you. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to feed that to your kids. You're going to feed that to the kids in your community. You're going to feed that to whoever else that's around you. You always going to, the first word that's going to come up to you when someone piss you off is you stupid. Mm-hmm. Get out of mm-hmm. my face. You sound dumb. Mm-hmm. You know right, what I right. mean? Like that, that stuff that, that we was raised hearing and we don't realize that the, the power of words affect you more than a fist. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and you could use it. You could use those same power words to uplift somebody the same way you could use it to bring them down. Mm-hmm. Wow. I always so I, I tell my nephews every day, you know, uh, it's easier to be nicer to somebody. It's easier to love somebody than it is to hurt them. It takes way more effort to sit there and tell somebody nasty stuff about themselves than it is to say, you know what? I love you. Mm-hmm. Let me help you out. Come over here real quick. Here, take take my sandwich because you're hungry. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. to me. That's way less effort than saying no. Get out of my face! Like now, you gotta have that that negativity in your spirit. That's mm-hmm. gonna hold. That's that's on you now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes I come home from work and I sage myself mm-hmm. because all the negativity that I was around now I'm carrying it into my home. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. I mean, wow. All that, yeah. all that, uh, that little saying, uh, if you know better, you're going to do, if you know better, you'll do better. People don't pay attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you know it. better, you'll do better. Right. If we right. wasn't taught better, now we don't know better. Our parents didn't know better. Their parents didn't know better. So now what? Our kids don't know better. So they ain't doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Like you said, when you first started, it, 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 it can go both ways, right? Because Mm -hmm. there was a book that came out in the late 80s called Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys by Mm Juwan Panjufu, right? Mm -hmm. And in this book, he's basically laying out how, and he had a series of books, but in in, in his series, he's basically laying out how, you know, we start off having these certain influences within our life, whether they be our parents, um, church, or school, stuff like that. And these may be the main influences when our, within our life. But as we get older, like in the in the, in the formative years, like eight and eight through 13, I think he was basically talking about, he said that those influences change from the people like our parents and churches or whatever, whatever is our philosophy or upbringing. And it changes to our peer group, right? right? So now the peer group has more influence over us than anything else. And if our peer group is dealing with a certain dynamic, then that may be what shapes us and molds us or nurtures us into being who we come out to be. So myself, right, my mother, you know, my mother, she's an educated person. She's highly into the church, want to bring you to church every single day of the week. You know, all she speaks about is church, this church, that church, this church, that. However, I could not, I couldn't take all of this church, 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 church. So I, I had to go out to other places to find the things that I enjoy doing, like hip hop music and um um just being in the street in general. I like to be in the street. So in, in that process, <laughs> I was nurtured into a different type of person, right? 
where mm -hmm. it ended up being, although I came from this environment and I had education and so forth and so on, and all of the proverbs and words of wisdom that you could possibly have for a person, I still was a person that winded up going to prison for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Right. So it can go either way. Right. But see, this is the thing, right? When we get into when we get into the situation, now it comes a point of what are you going to do? Right. Right? And some people they look at people that are in prison as it's their nature to be in prison. These people are bad people and all they ever did was bad things. So that's where they belong at. But I got an article right here that will show you that even though somebody is in prison, that does not mean that they're a bad person or that they're not intelligent, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at this article right here, look at this. Three incarcerated students beat Harvard in a debate. Here what happens next. In 2015, the story of Bar Prison Initiative's debate unions went over Harvard became a global news story. Leslie Brody of Wall Street Journal, who was there for the debate, first broke the story. Now, four years later, Brody reunited with the BPI alumni who were on the debate stage that evening to find out what happened to each of them since. The debate was also captured by camera crews filming for the upcoming documentary series College Behind Bars, which is coming out in November. It came out already. So when the inmates in the, in the New York maximum security prison beat Harvard in the debate four years ago, their, their victory made international headlines and highlighted the intellectual talent behind bars. Now the three debaters who outsmarted the Ivy Leaguers have a, have a new round of accomplishments. Two have found professional footing after their release. The third still in prison has earned a master's degree and wants to work in public health someday. They say they always will feel bonded with the debate, with the debate team at Ball Prison Initiative, which offers free college to incarcerated men and women. They aim to prove the power of rigorous, rigorous education to turn lives around. So why am I bringing this up? Because basically they're saying that, you know, a lot of people in, in impoverished communities or in these communities that a lot of us came from, they are innately supposed to be in those type of situations and they deserve to be in jail because they made a mistake. However, here we go with the nature versus nurture argument, the same thing in trading places. They brought college within prison and by bringing college within prison, they were giving something an education on a high level, the people who have made a mistake and they was able to take that education and beat one of the highest ranked colleges in mm. the world. Wow. So wow. what does that say about our communities? That says that a lot of these brothers and sisters that are in our communities that may be on the corner with their pants hanging down, drinking liquor, busting guns, selling drugs, doing all of these different things. If they were given a different opportunity, the resources and the nurturing environment, then they may be Barack Obama. Now, also, mm -hmm. um, being incarcerated, you don't even have half the uh, like the computers. You don't have, you know, computers. The, the school did. You know, they didn't have, like you mentioned to me earlier, they didn't have laboratories, but the school did. Right. You know, so with that being said, anyone who gone through uh, the ingest system, you know, because some people are in there, just like the, the five brothers, uh, the Central Park brothers, they was in mm -hmm. prison forever years and find out the person who actually did the crime said he did it and then all of a sudden they they oh you can let them out they are right but meanwhile they came out and they started doing a whole bunch of great things like just because somebody in that situation that don't mean that they are going to come out and be messed up only if you want to turn your life around so once again we live in harlem yes but we want to turn our life around we want to be able to uplift our people q brother live in brooklyn he went and, and got a school he want to turn his people life around. My sister up in Pennsylvania, she see what's going on. She want to turn her life around. So with that being said, not everybody want to be stuck in this situation, but not everybody want to have an open mind either. And some people want to continue on with their mind being closed. You could take, you can move out of Harlem, and go somewhere else and still be the same person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Th that you moved out from Harlem, but you up, 
wherever you at, you can still be that same individual. Nasty, mean, horrible, disrespectful. But it's only up to you to want to change no matter what. And that's period. So right. so Q Butter, can you tell us about Zyax Institute? Um, how people get their children in the program, what the program offers, and all of these different things. So people know that there are resources in the community that can make our youth great. Well, first of all, Zyx Institute is a black-only program. Got to be black. Got to be conscious. You got to be like, I don't want to say you have to be urban, but you have to be kind of like modern. You know, if you're, if you're old school, we with the old school stuff, but, you know, it's for us, you know, first, mm -hmm. you know, on top of that. And it is for homeschool students. So you have to be homeschooled to be in the Institute. We suggest the price. We don't tell you what to pay. We suggest the price of about 400 to $500 a month. However, we have a set your own price program. Whatever is good for you is good for us. Mm. Simple as that. You know, um, you can bring your children and you need a computer. We are actually, we have students in I think 35 to almost 40 states right now. Nice. And so it doesn't matter where you are. And if you don't have a computer, I hope you get a computer. And as long as you have internet access, and if not, we can try to help you get internet access, you're in the program. Okay. Child has to perform, it's portfolio based. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hood looking, I'm street looking urban. So I really push the students to do their best because I want them to know that it doesn't matter what you look like, your work is what tells the story. And mm -hmm. their work is represented in portfolios. And so your child has to do a lot of work, you know, we're heavy heavy, heavy into STEM. All of the students in the program are pushed to do STEM. They all have to know about electronics and electricity and African studies and black power and stuff like that. And so if that's not cool for you, this is not the program for you. You know, absolutely. If, you know, if you wanna, you know, we're not, we don't promote homosexuality. We don't promote any sexuality. You know I mean? If you were into promoting sexuality to kids, this isn't the place for you. Kids are kids. We want them to play with stuff like toys and make things. We're not into that type of stuff. So this isn't a place for you. If you want a religious place, this isn't a place for you. But if you're pro-black and you want somebody who respects the fact that you're an Israelite or a five percenter or a Nawabian who understands your plight as an indigenous person, this is for you. You know, symbol is that. I love it. Wow, can you tell us the tools behind you? Are they, the children using the tools as well? Yeah. Great. Yep. Yep, they have to learn refine tooling. They got to learn tools. They got to learn how to. We have a, a STEM art class we started this year. Um, they have to learn how to draw in three dimensions, and they have to analyze in three dimensions everything they do. Um, the design thing. We have a heavy. You know, I'm all about STEM. And in addition to that, so that's our institute. And we have the nonprofit with the institute is underneath, and we do a whole bunch of community programs underneath that. We have an RC program. We have a self defense program. Mm -hmm. um, drumming program, all this stuff going to be launched this, this year. We have two locations in New York, uh, one in Brownsville, one in best Stuy. So if you're interested in volunteering, we have the space for you. We're looking for adults that want to help adults and adults that want to help kids. So we just mm -hmm. want to be focused only on children. Like I said, we have to help the entire community out. We are expanding into Atlanta. That's the goal right now, to expand into Atlanta or New Jersey, but I want to say or, and. So we're looking to go into Atlanta. So if you're in Atlanta, hit us up. If you're in New Jersey, hit us up. If you're in any city and you have the means of being able to manage a location by yourself with our assistance, and you can, we can help you get the, organ, the location set up, we, you know, we'd love to get you on board and help us grow this into other states wow. as well as other countries. We have one student in Kumasi, Ghana. Mm. You know, he's been with us for almost two years, and we're looking to get other students around the world. So as long as you're pro-black, and by pro-black meaning that you're about black first, black only, black over any time, any time, anywhere, anybody you around, you putting on for black. I super, I listen, I just want to come and visit. Yeah, we need to pull up. For real. Yeah, we need to pull I, up, man. Oh my God. I'm I with it. it. Doors real. is open. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I love and it. I was at your um, I was at your video shoot. I should have jumped in the picture with you, but yo, <laughs> the video was dope. I seen the video yes. when it came out. Message mm -hmm. to the black man. That joint is fire. Good yo, looks, look, good looks, man. I'm happy. I'm happy as people out here that's still putting on for the people. And we got a caller right now. This person mm -hmm. is special. Okay. 
from. That's Mark. You already know. <laughs> peace call up, peace call the stitch your name where you call it from. Peace call up. Is that Mark? Yeah, that's Mark. Yeah, that's Uncle Mark right there. Peace. I want to say to Sister Gatewood, and she is so correct. We have to get out of the idea of sticks and stones because the name calling will affect the the ability of our children in their future. And so that is so important. It is not the nature of the white man to nurture anything about our black children. So brother, you have it so correct. And so it is up to us Black women have always nurtured our black children. And Brother Q in the black community, and he saw that many churches are closed. And the church, although has been the foundation in the black community, also have been derelict on what do you mean by that? Mm. Men in, in the Harlem community, when we wanted to do after school programs or even programs like mine, working with formerly incarcerated men and women, the church has often closed their doors. So we were lucky to have our brother Ill, who had many girls, who opened up his doors for us to have programs like educating us and also allow us to just be able to show films to our black children when the churches close their doors. The churches are not teaching black history. We can't wait on the schools to teach us black history. And many of the parents are not teaching black history to our black students because they don't know. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we have institutions such as the Harlem Liberation School with another of my celebrate thy brothers, brother R.J. Kayimba, who have been teaching this history and open the door to breaking up, breaking up on to pick up the slack. And so long before COVID, our brother Q Butter have been teaching black liberation and he's also have been teaching homeschooling and educating us on the new black consciousness. And I wish him continued success. He also was mm. producing my daughter when she was in the field of music. Mm. Diac is a multi-dimensional organization where black people can go and get photography, mm -hmm. music production, education of our children. And also Brother Q have also been teaching black economics in the way of credit counseling to our people. So mm. I love my younger brother, and I wish him and the family continued success. And Sister Ali, I wish you 
continued success in all that you are doing. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you all in the near future. Peace. Thank you. Peace. Oh, peace. Oh, now I love you, Mr. McPhee. See you soon. He's super dope. Definitely. Yeah. So, oh, oh, okay, okay. We got a request to show your video before you go, um, Q Butter. So we gonna close out with your video. But before hey. we do that, before we do that, um, we definitely want to give some space to my sister Quanesha so she could talk about the I Am Phenomenal book and when y'all are doing the um the book signing. And you know, we are gonna close out with message to the black man by Q Butter. Let me cue yes. that. Okay, so Saturday the twenty, what day is that? The twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. The twenty fourth at seven p.m. Uh, we will be doing a live uh, giveaways. We will be accepting sponsorships for anyone who not necessarily want to get their hands on the book. We want to help somebody else get their hands on the book. Um, I am phenomenal. It's all positivity. It's thought provoking. It's homework. I think uh, a lot of people, when they see a workbook, they get a little scared because it's work, but we have to continuously work on ourselves, and that's what this book is going to help with. You read a quote, and you're going to sit there, and you're going to think about this quote, and there's questions behind that quote to help you either understand the quote or understand your own thoughts of mm -hmm. the quote. Um it's affirmations. Yeah. <clears throat> right. it's, it's affirmations, some of which we uh, looked up, we did our research on, and some we came up on our own. Mm -hmm. So it's original. It's things that we feel, it's, it's quotes and affirmations we feel like helped us, so we want to share it as well. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, there's illustrations that belong to us. <laughs> mm -hmm. So everything in that book, everything in I Am Phenomenal, is phenomenally owned by the Gatewood sisters. <laughs> and it's black and owned, baby. <laughs> it is. It's mm -hmm. all black owned. So uh <laughs> that's that's our baby. We we you know we gifting to people, we gifting the that's why I keep saying, you know, the power of words, the power of words, that's what we put in this book. Hopefully uh it gets people to understand that that the power of words is is the most powerful thing. Mm -hmm. You could give to someone. Mm -hmm. So we're given the, the power of positivity. To is it on Amazon? Fellow brothers. Huh? Yes, it's on Amazon. But yes. you know what? <laughs> it is. But listen, Q, we have our books. But when I come to your school, I would like, because people are sponsoring the book, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. would like to sponsor, you know, a few books to you. So. Shout out to, right. I would definitely want to do that to you, for you. You're like the first person I said that to. Right. Yeah. The reason right. of the sponsorships is for schools. It's for, it's for schools. It's for after school centers. It's for counseling centers, which I'm trying to get my foot in the door out here in PA. I have women resources out here that I'm reaching out to mm -hmm. that helped me when I was in my own domestic violence situation. So I'm, you know, the couple of books that sponsor or the more sponsorships we get, we're able to reach out and give it to these these community services that helps women and men get out of situations, you know. It's I mean, reflection, you know. Right. We definitely want you to read it and 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 see the reflection of you as a black sister, a black brother, or you know, other and do the work. And, and do, do the, the work. work. Don't just you know, read the book. Do the work. work. Right. You know exactly. Exactly. So I'm excited. You know. But we definitely want to look at look at this video. This video is yes. dope. His, Most listen, definitely. You know, so, let's, you know, let's go into that. I received the call. I received the call. I think it was from Queen Low or Mark Maffee. One of them said, listen, this brother's having a video shoot in Harlem on 125th Street. Make sure you come up and show your support. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. That's what's up. So, you know, I pulled up and the brother was out there. This is my first time meeting the brother. And rest in peace to the... um. To the brother that was there, oh, yes. that was in the video. Yes. Um, what's the brother's name again? Oh my gosh. Um. Damn. You talking about uh, uh, um. King Face. Had... Oh, oh, huh? King Face. King Face. King Face. Right. Rest in peace, to the brother King Face. Yeah. He was a MAGA supporter, but he's still our brother. 
we can have different opinions without you know us looking at looking for harm on another person or so right. forth and so on. This yeah, brother was a, was a solid man. brother, huh? He was an avid supporter of what we what I was working, what we was doing over here, man. Actual That's fact, so he was right. out there, he was in the video, he was supporting, and you know, he actually gave gave me some time as well. I got to spoke speak with the brother, and I spoke to him before I even met Q Butter. And then when I met Q Butter, Q Butter was a solid individual as well. So I want to show this video right now. This is a fire video. Word. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Y'all can see it, right? Yes. I hope we can hear it good. It's pretty low. It's low? Mm-hmm. Message to the black man, keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tears to the black man. Keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tears. It's the truth, y'all. The sum is gonna hurt. The black man's the king of this earth. The black man did it all first. Analyze, go and do your research. They gave us all they worst and we did it all against it. Ten toes planted and did it all with no mention. Hard to understand it with all the lies and deception. When you can't stand the image of your own reflection. But time mm. is a blessing, healing all the pain. This message in a bottle, yes, there's any for your brain. Everything that makes you great lies inside of your veins. Won't you place the picture properly inside his frame? Now listen to this game and open up your eyes. The vision is simple, just focus on our lane and ride. They plotting our demise, but still we gon' rise. Focus on our throne, fist up in the sky, do a die. Message to the black man, keep your head up. Keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. You fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. Ain't let up. This culture should be happy, we ain't tears to the black man. Keep your head up, keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tears. This is so the true and living, I let them know. It's hard to separate what's fact from fiction, I know they won't. You never knew the truth, the truth that's hitting, I know they don't. You better never let them kill your vision, don't let it come. I know the world has got you going crazy, feeling psychotic. Pop a perk and how you feeling wavy, passing the cotton. They say your masculinity is toxic, you gotta stay. Stop you it. want success, you gotta feminize it, yeah. but criminalize it. Find your brother going with buses knocking, ah. and then you vomit, and you really look, ain't it ironic? How much we love everybody, but we hate our own. Oh. Dumb, deaf, and blinded. All we need is the proper knowledge, yeah. the proper guidance. Uh. We got it. See the brick. Give them power, society never gave them. Yeah. See the rulers in his cause, the synonymous in his nature. Uh. See the black man is called, uh. defying all the odds. All praise to the mock, the raises from the dark. This is to the black man. Keep your head up, keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. Fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tears to the black man. Keep your head up, keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. Fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tear up. Nobody love us, let us not pretend, no. Let us gain our independence and let us not depend. They'll never stop us now. They couldn't stop us then. This country lucky that we only want equality and not revenge. We need to invest in each other. How much you got to spend? I needed your help, my brother. How much you got to lend? You got a black business. I support you. I'm a buy black. The block I want us to buy back. I'm trying to buy that. I'm trying not to get shot at and battle live with a cop at. I need to see an all black Amazon I can shop at. Stop that. Cause a black man is king. Black man is God. Any black citizen. Celebrity quiet, that man a fraud. Cause they wanna leave us with no blessings. I see blacks get beat peacefully protesting, leaving the street bleeding with no weapons, or get COVID treated with no testing. I'm squeezing with no questions. To the black man. Keep your head up, keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tears to the black man. 
keep your head up. Keep your head up. All the shit we been through, I know you fed up. This constant type of pressure, you ain't let up. This country should be happy, we ain't tear up. Wow. Yo. That joint right there, bro. That joint right there is fire. Facts. Flames. Facts. <laughs> Word. Yo, Q Butter, man. Thank you for that song right there. Mm -hmm. That joint right there. We got to keep that joint in heavy rotation. Matter of fact, um, I want to send that joint to Rashid. Okay. Right? Because people need to hear that joint. Yeah. Send it out, shit. Let your kids watch it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Talk you about it. Spread the, the trash news. It? You heard of Smash the Trash It? Who? Every smash Saturday. Every Saturday, we on this Smash and Trash. So what I do is um, any artists that I know that got hot songs, I send it to the people down in Boston. And what happened is they put it in a rotation. When they put it in rotation, they going to constantly keep playing it. You know what I'm saying? So it is, yo, know, that song, I have to I have to send it to my brother, Rashi. Got to send it to him so they can play it out there in Boston. We need it in the, um, in the other, what's that, MP4 or MP3 format? Yeah, we need it in that. So if you could send it to us like that, you know, we'll, we'll get them to play it or whatever on it. What is it on Friday or Saturday night? Saturday nights. Saturday night. So if you could send us a, send it to us in that form, um, we'll send it to him and he'll play it. And we'll, so we'll, 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 we'll link you. We'll link you when um when he plays it or whatever. What's what what was your thoughts running through your mind when you heard that and saw that? And I was trying. I kept trying to put it on on mute. Put my mic on mute because I'm sitting here like mm mm. mm. Mm, like you know what like some of the images is hard to see but it's it's facts wow. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the black man is god is the king of the world the king of earth and unfortunately our black men don't know that right they don't know that. right shout right. out to youtube butter i'm <laughs> <laughs> sitting Bro, send that song to me so I can send it to to Venetia. Okay, gotcha. you know how she be bumping music in the car and the kids, right. the kids catch on quick. The kids right. catch on. Quick. That's the yeah, jam session. I'm gonna car. send it to the email you just sent to me. I. Right? All right, that's peace. All wow, right, so we're, we're, we're ready to, to close out. Song. Yeah, we're yeah, we gonna spread, spread that song out. We got <laughs> that. Man. People mad out Good here with that. Good Good look, <laughs> and look, they even spoke. They even spoke about the Nas X situation in there. You seen this? I saw that. that. Bef that was way before this whole situation that he doing now, so they was already ahead of that. They was on that. Yeah, that's a piece, man. So listen, we getting ready to close out. We want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Quanisha, for coming on, and thank you for Q Butter coming on. Yo, we thank salute y'all, you. man. We salute y'all, and this has definitely been an excellent topic. It's very relevant in our community right now because they constantly try to put in our face that we are not worth being honored we are not worth our lives mattering because they're saying that it is in our nature to be in this condition but no we have been nurtured to be in this condition by these jim crow laws we have been nurtured to be in this condition by post-traumatic slave syndrome we have been nurtured to be in this condition because of these lackluster schools and the red line and practices and all of these different things that they are doing to our communities to make it where we cannot come out of it as a successful person that's so we wanted to get this message out here today so we could stop this argument. Stop saying because it's shooting in our neighborhood that it's okay for the police to kill us as well. That's not right and exact, man. That's a wrong argument because the people that are doing it are being paid by the people that's in the community. And if the people in the community need to reach out to somebody, they have nobody to reach out to because they're killing them too. Right. Boom. Boom. Definitely, so, I want to say peace, man, and I and I love y'all, man, and I like to say shout out to everybody that tuned in today. My brother Charles Russell Clink, my um, my brother Uncle Mark Mafee, and um, 
Everybody, everybody that tuned in today, I hope you got something out of the situation. We're going to keep the conversation going. Salute to my sister, Nikki Gardner. Salute the Q Butter once again. Salute the Quanation Gatewood. And we out. Peace. We out. Peace. Peace.